This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. I have a dream that little children will one day live in a nation where they will not be judged by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. I'm your host, Sharon Thomas Yarbrough. Welcome and thank you for joining Sister Power. Our topic for this episode is I Have a Dream, celebrating the legacy of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. I Have a Dream is a public speech delivered by American civil rights activist Martin Luther King Jr. During the March on Washington for Jobs and Freedom on August 28, 1963, in which he calls for an end to racism in the United States and called for civil and economic rights delivered to over 250,000 civil rights supporters from the steps of the Lincoln Memorial in Washington, D.C. The speech was a defining moment of the civil rights movement. Today, we will discuss his voice, his teachings, his love for humanity with Sister Power VIP guest, artist Kimberly Keys. Hi, Kimberly, Hello, my dear friend. Finally, we've made it. Yes, we did. Good. Thank you for coming on Sister Power. Thank you for having You're me. You're welcome. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, um, I really started out totally different field. Um, currently, I do work in education, and I also um, am, am an artist. So I would probably have to go back to when I went back to school in my late 20s and um, got my education. I studied psychology, and I also uh, went and got a master's in business administration. So from there, I worked in business, and I taught for many years, and, um, and then I also moved back to Hawaii. Our family went, came back in 2009, and I'm still in education, but I started work, and I actually started working in art about two years ago during the Martin Luther King celebration that the NAACP held, and that's when it all started. Oh, wonderful. Well, we're, I'm just so excited about this weekend. And as they can see here, that you have a portrait that you've painted of Dr. Yes, Martin Luther King. Tell us about the inspirations behind your artwork. Well, my inspiration really started with Martin Luther King. Uh, when we had our celebration about two years ago, the MLK Gala, I wanted to do something for the silent auction. And so it was because of the Martin Luther King Gala that really woke me up into developing my talent and doing something for the silent auction. So I created a portrait of President Barack Obama and I had no idea what the reception would be for this. And uh, it was uh, went up for auction, and someone actually bought it, and I was thrilled and excited. And from then on, I just continued painting um, because it's just been a passion for me, and I think it's a calling that God has given me. And He started it off with the MLK Gala. Why well, we have a painting here uh, with uh, President Barack Obama and mm -hmm. uh, Dr. King, and. This happens to be my personal uh, <laughs> painting, which is just absolutely fabulous. Well, let's go back a little bit okay. about the history of Dr. Martin Luther King, and let's talk about Rosa Park. Yes. And all she wanted to do was have a seat. And it's just started from there. She wanted to have a seat, mm -hmm. uh, and Rosa Park rode at the front of a Montgomery, Alabama bus on the day of the Supreme Court's ban on segregation mm -hmm. of the city's buses took effort. Mm -hmm. Just t tell me your viewpoints on, on, on Rosa Parks. Well, Rosa Parks, uh, she was already involved with the NAACP, from what I understand. She was a secretary from it for NAACP. And there was a particular driver of the bus that she did not want to ride with because she had gotten off his bus one time because she was told she needed to enter the back side of the bus. Well, she got outside, and as she was going to the back side of the bus, he took off. And she said, 
never again. I'm not going to ride with this man again. So the next time that she did end up ride, getting on the bus, she uh, sat somewhere in the middle uh, because the way the buses were loaded, um, the white people had preference for the front, and then there was a middle section and a back section. So as black people were in that middle section, were sitting there, if white people came and that full section was full, they had to move back. So she's riding on the bus, and she happens to see it's the same bus driver. <laughs> she's, oh. And she was already upset about that. And then, so when someone came over, white person, to tell her to give up her seat, she simply refused. And that's where, you know, it all began. And I greatly admire her for her courage and standing up for, I will not get up off of this, out of my seat. I am not going to do it. And she did it. And she did. You know, mm -mm. I think this is so important for the young generation to really know, you know, where we came from and how far we've come. Mm -hmm. and, and as Oprah said on the show, that she gave that great, great speech, she brought up Rosa Parks' name uh, regarding Reese Taylor. And I think Rosa Parks was the one to investigate the rape. She was raped by six yes. white men, and she just passed away not long ago and 90-some years old. Mm -hmm. So history is just moving forward constantly, and yeah. I, I think that this is very important um, for the generation to know, because you do teach the young kids about um, our history. And so talk more about the NAACP. Okay. so. Well, with the NAACP, um, I'm executive chairperson for the youth. I'm sorry, for um, community relations. Okay. There's another organization that I work for the youth, and that's Lynx Incorporated, and I'm the chairperson for the youth. Um, and also with my church, I work with the youth. So what um, I began to do was start building this gallery so I can try to build awareness um, for culture for the children, to learn about their history, and mainly to learn about um, fine art and mm. what it's like to, to see it, experience, and even do it, you know, in workshops. Okay, well, let's view some of your artwork. You, you did bring a few pieces with you. <laughs> yes, you I did. You did brought several pieces <laughs> several with you. Pieces. This is wonderful. And the first piece you're going to talk about yeah, so what I did was I made some mini uh, bios based on the portraits that I have. My portraits kind of come and go because if someone buys it or something happens, I have to kind of replenish. So I needed to replenish Martin Luther King, so I'm very, very happy that I was able to do that. And I made mini bios on each one of my portraits. So. And it's hard to put them on a little tiny uh, card, yeah. but I wanted to make them short and small, especially as people go through and view the portraits. And then they can also go and study more about each person, but it's mainly to encourage the children and to just give them to something to think about and something to continue to learn about. Well, Martin Luther King was a son of a preacher man. Yes, he was. And he was a minister as well. Yes, he was. And just my, like my father, for instance, the day that they aired him giving that speech, I have a dream, I was in my teens. That was such a powerful, powerful speech. And what I remember, and I would call from it, is when he said, we're free, we're free, thank God Almighty, we're free at last. Yes. That really resonated with me. And so you did this painting. How long did it take you to paint Martin Luther King? Oh, I think I worked on it continuously for about a week. One and, week? Yeah, continuously. I'm talking day and night. And I chose this particular pose because of the motion in his eyes and him pointing out, you know, during his speech. And it just, it just captured me. And I said, you know, this is the pose that I wanted to do for him. Oh, that's wonderful. Uh -huh. And what is your next painting? Did you want to say? Elaborate a little more about oh, your painting. Uh, or you want let's to move see. Forward? Well, I just want to say, as far as Martin Luther King, um, what I have on 
to tell the children, you know, mm -hmm. as they go through, is to just let them know that his legacy is to secure progress on civil rights in the United States, and also days after his assassination, that's when they passed the Civil Rights Act of 1968. 1968. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And today, if he was not assassinated, and hopefully he would, you know, his legacy does live on. It would be 89 years old. And that's that still right. 89 years wow. young. Yeah, that's not very old. No, you know, not it's today. Not, not today. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. All right. So the Civil Rights Movement, and we have the non uh, violent social change, the center. Mm -hmm. He has a center for nonviolent social change. And um, I didn't bring anything on that, but it does, you know, it is part of his legacy. Yes. And, and you know, what he has left with us. And it's just a wonderful thing. Um, so I have portraits that I brought that's going to start with Martin Luther King. And then I'd like to just work my way through other people that have contributed to the civil rights movement. We would love to see that. OK. And yes, all right, take all us right. on this journey. I'm all excited right. about this journey. So what I did was I went through my gallery, because my gallery has several, all kinds of people from different um, backgrounds, different categories. So I went and picked a few and picked a few of my favorites that does have to do with civil rights. One of my very, very favorites that I love is Frederick Douglass. Oh, take, tell us a little bit about Frederick Douglass. Oh, well, this is a history lesson. I love that. <laughs> this is a history lesson for, for us all. Well, for Frederick Douglass, okay, he was born Frederick Augustus Washington Bailey, and he lived February 18th through February 20th, 1895. He was a social reformer, abol abol um, abolitionist, yes. orator, writer, and statesman. And he's really dear to my heart because I went to visit his home in Virginia and it was, it just really, really touched my heart to actually see how he lived, um, to be able to go into his different rooms, uh, where he wrote, where he slept, where he ate. Um, he was just a magnificent man. Uh, he escaped slavery, mm -hmm. as you know, and so what he has in his living room is he has uh, separating the living room and uh, another room. He has a balls and chains on his curtains to remind himself where he came from so he will never, ever forget in this fabulous, beautiful home on top of the hill. So that really touched me too. Oh my goodness. So he escaped slavery and went on to become one of the most prominent leaders to fight the end of slavery and abolition movement led to the passage of the 13th Amendment. Mm -hmm. So that was something that was very important. And he also advocated for women's suffrage as well, you know. And um, uh, he was the first African American to be appointed as U.S. Marshal and was also appointed the U.S. Minister to Haiti in 1889. Wow. Uh, he's also special to me because he's one of my very first paintings. This is your first he's painting? He's one of my very, very first paintings. And when he appeared on this paper, it just threw me aback. Um, the emotions on his face, what he must be thinking, it just really captured me. Oh, so I'm just, I'm so much in awe of that. Yeah, it's beautiful, absolutely mm -hmm. beautiful. So how long have you been painting? I've actually been doing this for about two years straight now. This is going into my second year. Two years? <laughs> yes. <laughs> two, two years? Yes. So this is all new to me. <laughs> it doesn't look like that at all. My goodness. Thank it's, you. I mean, how you perfected his eyes and the hair and his beard. I think it's a very spiritual thing. I, really, it, I do not think that it is me. It's coming. It's through me, that God is working mm -hmm. through me, and how this appears on the paper. God is good. Mm -hmm. God is Absolutely. good. Absolutely. All right. And what people should know about the Civil Rights Movement uh, is blacks and whites together. When Dr. Martin Luther King gave his speech on that day, you would see people 
that were locking arms together. The late great Lena Horne, mm -hmm. uh, yes, and Sidney Portier and Harry Belafonte. So pe everyone is all about peace. This is what people want. Peace wanted. and Just unity. Peace, peace, and, peace unity. and unity. Yes. All right, Beautiful carry us on through your journey. All right. So um, the next person that I have is another favorite. All right. Well, what we're going to do, we're going to come back and we're going to take a break okay. with Kimberly Keys and join us for I Have a Dream, celebrating the legacy of Martin Luther King. Planning all week for the day of the big game. Watching at home just doesn't feel the same. What on the list is who's going to drive? It's nice to know you're going to get home alive. Plan for fun and responsibility. Choose the DT. Captain of our team is the DT. For every game day, assign a designated driver. But grandmother, what big eyes you have. She said. What are you doing? <laughs> Research says reading from birth accelerates our baby's brain development. Push. Oh. Read aloud 15 minutes. Every child, every parent, every day. They said I could play, so any chance to play at all. You know, that's my life. I love music. Yeah. So we're doing. Welcome back to Sister Power. I have a dream celebrating the legacy of Dr. Martin Luther King. And this is Dr. Martin Luther King's birthday that's coming up Monday. Yes. And I'm so happy that all across the world, people are celebrating Martin Luther King Day. Before I go any further, artist Kimberly Keys, yes. I want to congratulate you. And I did read congratulations on showcasing two paintings, one of President Barack Obama and First Lady Michelle Obama, which will be presented to hang at the Barack H. Obama Elementary Magnet School yes. of Technology in Atlanta, Georgia. Congratulations. Thank you, Sharon. Thank what you so much. What an accomplishment for an artist who's been painting for two years. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know what to say about that, but I'm absolutely thrilled about that. I think that that's what this is all about, sharing um, what my gift is, and I hope those children enjoy it, and I hope that maybe someday uh, the President and First Lady will see some of my work that's on the wall, too, and enjoy it as well. Oh, they will. <laughs> well, you were taking us on a journey with your fabulous artwork. Now, who are we? Is this Harriet Tubman? Absolutely. Oh, Harriet Tubman. Tell yes. us a little bit about Harriet Tubman. Well, first of all, Harriet Tubman, we did have her, um, we did have her presented at the African American Film Festival last year. Yes. And um, we had a wonderful film about her, and she also touched many hearts. And one of the things that really makes it all uh, work for me as an artist is that when people came out of the room, they were so touched by the story of Harriet Tubman, and then they see the painting, and I had one woman, she just broke out in tears, and she's crying as she's looking at the painting. Well, this, what people understand now, it's a struggle that African Americans went through and the history that she was able to put her life on the line mm -hmm. and take us from freedom. That's right. Take us from slavery to freedom, I should That's say. That's right. That's right. And so if I can say a little bit about Please. Harriet Tubman. Now, she was born Araminta Bross. She was born 1822. We don't have the exact date, but 1822, and died March 10th, 1913. She was an abolitionist, human, humanitarian, an armed scout, and a spy for the U.S. Army during the Civil War. So the legacy uh, that she leaves with us is, of course, we know she was born into slavery. Mm. She escaped and made 13 missions to save other slaves. And um, 
she used a network called the um, Underground Railroad, right. where there were safe houses and places that people can go and work their way into freedom. Uh, she later helped an, another abolitionist. His name was John Brown, and she helped recruit uh, people t for his cause, and that was to raid Harper's Ferry in the post-war era. Okay, well, so, let's move yeah, on that, to the that's, next that's painting. That's my lady there. Oh, yes. Strong now, and fierce. The next one that I do have, he's also another very beginning painting. Very beginning. This is wow. W.E.B. Du Bois. Oh, yes. And uh, he's one of my, probably maybe my third or fourth. And he was born William Edgar Burghardt. And his birth date is February 23rd, 1868 through August 27th, 1963. So, he was an American sociologist, he was a historian, civil rights activist, pan-Africanist, author, writer, and editor. Author and writer. Yeah. And so his legacy is he was the first African American to earn a PhD from Harvard. Very first. Yes, he was. I didn't know that. Yes. And he also laid the foundation for the African American struggle for equal rights. So he's there, I mean, from the very, very beginning. He also co founded the NAACP and he was the editor for uh, the, the newsletter for the NAACP as well. Okay. And that was in 1909. So he wrote five novels. Uh, three bi autobiographies, and he's a leading writer of his lifetime during that time period. He was also the voice for the black community for a lot of young African Americans. So he it was a huge contribution. Another trailblazer. Mm -hmm. All right, and let's see who you have okay. next. Okay, well, let's keep this it is moving. fun. I love, love it. I love, I love it. this, too. And so we can <sighs> remind people that this weekend is Dr. Martin Luther King's birthday. Absolutely, this weekend is his birthday, and we do have the MLK Gala. Okay. And that's coming up Saturday, January 13th, and it's going to be at the um, Pomakai Ballrooms at Dole Cannery. That's wonderful, you know, years ago, when the African American Association was formed, we had the honor to have Martin Luther King III as our speaker. And it was such an honor to have him there. It, it's just wonderful. So I'm so glad that this is moving forward. And I see one of my favorites in Nina Simone. She's one of my favorites. Oh, I too. love it. another strong black woman. Yes, Nina Simone. Now, did you know that she was born Eunice Kathleen Wayman? The only reason why I know that <laughs> is because the Honolulu African American, uh, the Honolulu African American Film Festival, the committee we honored her a few years ago. Nina Simone, just a fierce woman. Yes, and I was there, and that was a wonderful presentation, and I truly honored. That's why I painted her Gorgeous. because of that. Oh, thank you. Yes, and so uh, American singer, songwriter. Wonderful pianist, yes. classical pianist, um, arranger, and civil rights activist. So the legacy that Nina leaves with us is she was known as the voice of civil rights movement. She wrote Mississi Mississippi Goddamn in response to the 1963 assassination of Medgar Evers and the Birmingham uh, church bombing, which killed uh, four little girls. Uh. Yeah, I remember yeah. that. Yeah. And so she was a very strong um, uh, civil rights activist, and she did so many things um, towards the cause of civil rights. Well, she's, you know, one of the women that I so admire because we're still women, as women, we're still, you know, forging ahead. We still want to be res respected mm -hmm. and listened to. So she did break ground before it was really. Time to break ground. Yes, she did. Yeah. All yes, right. She did. So, who do we have next? Well, 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 who do we have next? This one has a little story to it, and I'll try to be quick, but this is Miss Angela uh. Davis. And Angela Davis, um, this one's very special to me because she happened to sign this for me April oh, 13th. Oh, I see. 
Yeah, I think it's sure. 2016. She was visiting here in Honolulu. She was visiting here in Honolulu. Her, her second and time. A dear friend of mine surprised me and seated me right next to her. And I look up, and there she is. And I happen to have that painting, thinking, hey, if I see her, maybe she'll sign it. And I was right next to her, and she signed it. And so it was a wonderful experience. Um, so this, of course, is absolutely one of my favorite paintings of as well. Of course. That's a masterpiece because you have the signature of Angela Davis. I have and the just signature. tell us a little bit about Angela Davis. Well, now she was born Angela Yvonne Davis, born January 26, 1944. She's a political activist and academic and an author. Yeah. And so she did come out to Honolulu and speak to us. We had a wonderful time. Um, her legacy leaves us. There's so much to talk about, yeah. but just to keep it as a mini bio, um, she has addressed civil and women's rights, poverty and peace, health care and prison reform. 1970, her activism in prisoners' rights led to the, her arrest and trial on charges of kidnapping, conspiracy and murder. Her imprisonment inspired the international Free Angela movement. Her case became the symbol of the abusive power of the criminal justice system against minorities, and she was acquitted in 1972. Yeah, I just remember all that time. Yes. It, this is so wonderful that you were able to bring some of your artwork, Kimberly, and unfortunately we have to close. But I want the people to know that Keys to Art is a large traveling art gallery focusing on various themes, including mm -hmm. Hawaiian culture and promoting black history. And you did, definitely gave us a black history <laughs> lesson. So to end on this note, in 10 seconds or less, mm -hmm. please let the people know on Monday where to go, at what time, and where are we to meet for the parade and rally. Oh, yes. So that's very exciting. We're having the parade and the rally January 15th. And um, the parade is going to start at Magic Island, and it goes all the way through to Kapiolani Park. And the parade starts at 9 o'clock. All the festivities start at 9 o'clock. So I will have my gallery. I'll have a huge white tent there if we're able to get that thing up, because I just got it. So okay. I hope I can get it together. And uh, we'll have an art gallery, and we'll have lots of paintings and prints to sell. Uh, well, thank you. Well, thank you for spending part of your day with us. And we appreciate you joining Sister Tapara. And thank you, Kimberly. Happy Martin Luther King Day.